part one of creating a modular input system for your Unity game. And in the first part of this tutorial, we're going to be defining all of our actions in the game. And we're going to create an interface for the input manager class. And then we're going to script the input manager class itself. So let's get started with that. I have a brand new Unity project and I'm using Unity 5.6.2, but this will work with any Unity version. So I'm going to create a new folder and call it scripts. So I have a place to put all my scripts in there. I'm going to say create a new C sharp script. And this one I'm going to call input action. Now input action is just a script to define all of the actions in the game. So anytime we have an action, we're going to add it into this class or into this file. Uh, it's not a class actually. We're going to delete everything out of it. So all we're going to have here is a public enum and I'm going to call it input action the same as the file name. So in this script we're just having a enum to define all of our actions. So I'm going to put none at zero and then I'm going to go and list all of the uh, actions that are going to be in my game like jump, attack, and I'm going to go down the list. Okay, so I have all of my actions listed in the enum. And anytime there's a new action, like crouching, I would need to come into here and add the new action into the list. So, But we're just going to go with uh, these nine actions here. Well, eight with none is zero. And two that are really important, and almost every game is probably going to have, is the move horizontal and move vertical inputs. Almost all games are going to have those inputs, whether it's the arrow keys on the keyboard or WASD, or it's the uh, a game controller with a joystick. So almost all games are going to have a horizontal and a vertical input on those. And those are going to match up uh, eventually to the um, horizontal and vertical inputs here in the Unity Input Manager. So I've made a new script and we just have an enum in here with all of our actions and this is going to be the place where we define all of the input actions in the game. The next thing I'm going to do is create an interface for the input manager class. So I'm going to start it with a capital I and that means it's an interface. And so it's an interface for the input manager class. So it looks kind of funny with two capital I's in a row but but that means that it's the interface for the input manager class. So what an interface is, is right here on the Microsoft C Sharp reference, an interface contains only the signatures of methods, properties, events, or indexers. A class or a struct that implements the interface must implement all the members of the interface that are specified in the interface definition. So that means that anything that we put into this interface is going to have to, when anything that implements this interface is going to have to implement everything that we declare. And I think it's a little bit easier just to explain it like this. I'm going to delete everything out of here including all of this uh, using. We're not going to need any of that. And this actually isn't even a class. It's just an interface. So I'm going to say public interface I input manager. So I'm going to delete the part where it implements mono behavior. And this is all we have now. So this isn't a complete class on its own, but another class is going to implement this and then we're going to have to define some functions that are required. So the required functions are bool is enabled. And on this one, we're just going to put in the default git and set accessors. And then we're going to do a bool, another boolean, and this one is git button. And git button is when the player is holding down a button. So first we need an integer for the player ID. We're going to keep track of the player ID. That way if it's a multiplayer game we're set up to handle that or even complicated single player games may have 
uh, utilize uh, the player ID. And the next thing that the get button function is gonna take is the input action, and we're gonna call that action. Now input action is just from the enum that we had defined. So that is the Boolean get button, and we're gonna want the same exact for get button down, that is when the button first goes down, and then we're gonna want one for get button up when the button is released. Now here we're gonna wanna float for the get axis, and this is gonna be for like the horizontal or the vertical. We wanna get the axis, and we just want the same exact variables here. Player ID and input action, action. And this is all that the interface is going to have in it. Um, so this is just an interface, and it says any class that implements this interface is going to have to have all five of these functions in it. So now that we have the interface created, I'm just going to close that and reopen it so that it fixes, takes the path out of the name there. So I have the interface created for my input manager class, and now I'm gonna create the actual input manager class. So I'm gonna call this one input manager, and of course, just one, one I. And what we're gonna do here is, we want it to implement mono behavior. We'll use some mono behavior functions. But I'm gonna put a comma in, and we also want it to implement our interface. And so the interface, is of course the I input manager. Now you're gonna see that we get a red line here and the reason why is because we haven't implemented all of the five required interfaces or the members that we had defined. Uh, so if we click show potential fixes, we can say implement interface and it's gonna go ahead and implement those five functions that we had declared here in the input manager interface. So I'm gonna delete the uh, start and update. We're not gonna use those. And we have all the interfaces implemented. We have is enabled and get access is out of order. I'm gonna put that, it put it in alphabetically, but I'm gonna put it down here. And we have is enabled, get button, get button down, get button up and get access. They're throwing the not implemented yet exception, so we're going to have to write some code here. Um, but let's get started with the input manager class. The first thing we're going to define are some static members. I'm going to do a private static input manager, so just a, an instance of this class. I'm going to call that underscore instance. And that's private, so I'm also going to make a public static and the public one is gonna be the interface. And that's gonna be called instance without the underscore. So we're gonna put the brackets in and we're gonna say get. And when we call get, we're gonna return underscore instance with a semicolon. So we have a public static input manager instance without the underscore. And when we try to get that, it's gonna return the private one, uh, the actual instance of this input manager class. So now let's say public static void, we're gonna do a function called set instance. And set instance is gonna require an input manager to be passed in and we'll just call that one instance. And in this function, first we're gonna check if the input manager is equal Let's see, we'll say input manager dot underscore instance. If that is equal to the one that we've passed in, so we're trying to set the instance to the instance that already exists. So we're just trying to set the input manager to the one that's already being used. Uh, if that's being done, we're just gonna return because there's no, the instance is already set. There's no need to set it again. Next, we're gonna say if input manager dot underscore instance 
is not equal to null. So we're passing in, we want to set a new instance. It's not the current one that's in there and it's not equal to null. So we know that there is an input manager instance, but it's not the same one. If that's the case, we're going to say input manager dot underscore instance dot enabled is equal to false. So turn off the current instance. And once we've turned off the current instance, we're going to say input manager underscore instance is equal to instance, the one that we've, that we're trying to set it to. So set the instance to this one. If, if it's already set, just return. We don't want to go any further. If there is an instance already in place, it's not the same one. So turn it off and then set the input manager instance to the one that we've just told it to set it to. All right, so the set instance function is complete. And the next part that we're gonna do here is just a, uh, let's make a private or it could be public, but we'll do a private Boolean and we'll call it underscore don't destroy on load. And we're gonna set that to true by default. We probably don't wanna destroy the this um, game object as scenes are loaded and unloaded. So we said don't destroy and load is gonna be set to true. So we have now the uh, public, and I'm gonna make this is enabled a virtual Boolean. So public virtual Boolean is enabled. When we try to get if it's enabled, what we're going to return is this dot is active and, and enabled. Uh, so this is a mono behavior function and it just tells us it's a Boolean if the behavior is enabled. So that's checking if this script itself, if this input manager component is active and enabled, uh, true or false, we're going to return that. And then if we try to set it, we're going to say this dot enabled is equal to value and value is something that's being passed into this function. When we say is enabled, we're going to have to pass a value into that true or false. That's what this value is. So we have the get the get and the set accessor set for the is enabled function. And now before we go down to get button, let's put the awake function in. I'm going to do protected virtual void awake. So in awake, we're just going to do one thing. We're going to say if the don't destroy on load boolean is set, this one right here. So if that's true, we want to say don't destroy on load that is the mono behavior function and we're going to have to say what game object we could just say uh, game object like this but it's possible this could be a child of another game object so what you might want to do is don't destroy and load this dot transform dot root dot game object so it gets the root game object and it says make sure that the root game object is set to don't destroy unload. Now you can change that right here, just set it to false if you want to. Now let's get down to the get button. So right here, we actually don't want get button to do anything. Uh, we're gonna create an additional input manager class and that is gonna be the one that handles the get button. And the reason why is because this is our base input manager and any other input manager class that we create, for example, the Unity input manager, we're going to create a Unity input manager class that works with the Unity input manager specifically. But you may have different input systems, for example, rewired. And in that case, we would create a rewired input manager. So the Unity input manager is going to handle the get button or 
the other input manager system that we were to create, for example, a rewired input manager, that would also handle the get button. But here in the base input manager class, it's not going to handle these uh, functions. They're just going to be blank. So we're going to delete the brackets and just put a semicolon in. So delete all the brackets, put a semicolon in. And then what we can do here is put the word abstract. And that makes these functions abstract. And what that means is if we go over to the C sharp reference, the abstract modifier indicates that the thing being modified has missing or incomplete implementation. The abstract modifier can be used with classes, methods, properties, indexers, and events. Use the abstract modifier in a class declaration to indicate that the class is only intended to be a base class of other classes. And that's exactly the situation that we're in. This is just a base class and we're going to create other input manager classes. For example, the Unity input manager, the rewired input manager, or maybe some custom uh, input manager, but this is only a an abstract class that we're gonna that another class is gonna implement. So up here we're gonna say public abstract class input manager, and that lets it know that this is just a incomplete class that's going to be implemented by a different class. So now we don't have errors down here on our functions get button get button down get button up get access uh, because they're going to be implemented later in the unity input manager class so this class is now complete it is an abstract class so nothing is going to work yet because nothing has implemented this input manager this base input manager class so in part two we're going to make the unity input manager which works with this unity input manager system and then we'll have a functional input system for our game so stay tuned for part two like and subscribe if the video helps you out and i'll see you guys in the next video